Ladies and gentlemen, giving the 2015 James McTaggart Memorial Lecture, please welcome Armando Inucci. Thank you, Zai. Uh, thank you, trainees. Thank you, everyone. Um, staring nervously out at you all, my future sitting in front of me, and a slightly Nurembergian backdrop behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually call that red Nuremburgity. Uh, uh, my mind goes back 15 years uh, when I was lassoed into a BBC brainstorming session on the arts. And I spent the day in a brightly painted room at the mercy of a team of professional arts brainstormers. Now, these were experts paid to be spontaneously positive. They had degrees in being upbeat and had trained with uh, some of the world's most optimistic people. This is a day to let your hair down, said the leader. It's all about having fun. We want to have fun. And then she looked straight at us. If you're not prepared to have fun, get out now. <laughs> I got out. And I resolved that the last thing I would ever do is trap a group of talented people in a colorful room and subject them to one-sided opinion masquerading as open debate. Until now. <laughs> so, if you're not prepared to hear why I think politicians have got the British television industry completely wrong because they peer at it through a filter of their own prejudices, and that's a fact, then get out now. <laughs> to those staying, can I start by saying what an honour it is uh, to be asked to give this James McTaggart Memorial Lecture tonight, uh, and in this, its 40th year. Uh, looking back to 1976, we can see how far the TV landscape has changed. Then, the big classics were Thunderbirds, David Attenborough, and Paul Dark. <laughs> so let's congratulate ourselves on how far we've come. We were told television would by now have changed utterly. We were told that by people paid to know. They said viewing would decline and be replaced by mobile and laptop alternatives. And indeed, brash new entities such as Amazon and Netflix have emerged, bringing streaming digital pictures, a, a telecommunicated sequence of visual data, or television, if you will. <laughs> which immerse us in dynamic new forms of storytelling, such as the one-hour drama, <laughs> <clears throat> and provide us with revolutionary new stories, such as House of Cards. <laughs> now, I suppose what this really tells us is that there are eternal verities, even in television, which time will never change. We may alter and innovate how we watch, from set to laptop to tablet, and yes, unbelievably, to a watch. But we still crave the same things. Basically, costumes and cakes. <laughs> but, but wait, the experts told us, wait. Our attention span will diminish. And we'll hop from three minute clip to six second vine to nanosecond blap. Tiny, tiny singularities of entertainment that spell the death of long-form viewing. Instead, we binge watch four seasons worth of quality box sets <laughs> in one weekend, sitting through what is effectively a 48-hour television program <laughs> while our children grow hungry and cold. <laughs> So much for experts. Their guess is as good as yours, but more expensive. <laughs> they proclaimed the death of the book, but did so in best-selling books. 
Economic experts failed to predict the banking crisis, but still cashed their checks. Earlier in May, polling experts said there would be a hung parliament. And now they carry on like we still think they're credible. Or maybe that's what their polling is telling them. <laughs> the truth is, nobody knows anything. And that's because we're all individually full of contradictions. We're all annoyingly, deliciously unknowable, beyond algorithmic reach for now. In fact, the recent general election provides a perfect matrix of confused, contradictory information. It was the election in which the public punished the Lib Dems for not stopping the Tories, and did so by voting in the Tories. <laughs> it was the election in which the party advocating the living wage decisively lost to a party now advocating the living wage. It was the one in which Nicola Sturgeon became the most popular, hated politician in Britain. <laughs> and it reached its climax with the leader of UKIP resigning and then rapidly unresigning in a new form of statecraft which I can only describe as bungee politics. <laughs> this place is a mess. We are a mess. We don't know what we want. So trying to be specific and prescriptive in this unknowable landscape is a fool's errand. It would be a fool indeed who would try to quantify precisely what, say, our broadcasters should do. He or she would be really mad if they tried to define the purposes and scope of certain TV channels. <laughs> Madder still if they did it by, say, some sort of panel of experts. <laughs> and a mad, mad system that would then take these expert findings and enshrine them in law. Oh dear. <laughs> I've called this lecture, we're all in this together, and I hope George Osborne, the Prime Minister Regent, doesn't mind, <laughs> doesn't mind my borrowing his useful phrase for these times. Now, over the years, many political phrases have caught my eye. I remember particularly in 2010, uh, noticing the Orwellian contortions language had gone through to arrive at the Tory campaign slogan, vote for change, vote conservative. <laughs> but believe me, saying tonight we're all in this together, I'm not being ironic. Playful, maybe, but deadly serious. British television needs to be at its strongest. With a big global fight ahead, we need to consolidate all our talent and expertise. Yet broadcast and production have grown ever more discreet and separate, perhaps rather wary of each other. And now politicians have exacerbated that division. Ministers have come to see broadcast those on the executive branch of television as the only group to talk to, marginalising the creative community that drives production, which I believe is actually the core strength of British television. If we don't do something to redress the balance, to allow the voice of the creative and production community in TV to be heard loud and clear, the politicians will become our masters rather than partners and supporters, acting as if they alone are the experts. It will be a distracting interference and ultimately harmful to British television. Plus tonight, there'll also be jokes. <laughs> and exactly halfway through the speech as a form of halftime entertainment, this is absolutely true, a detailed battle sequence. <laughs> <clears throat>